I was done and I realized, all right, you know, I need to keep working. What am I going to do? I went back and revisited some of these songs, but I realized I have to re-record them. That's why I didn't see that they were my songs, because I recorded them in a way that I thought other people would want to use them. Mm. So I went and re-recorded about, I don't know, five or six of the songs that were already here. And then my buddy Evidence from Dilated Peoples um, got involved with me, and we recorded a few of these rap tracks, and it started kind of coming together. And it kind of started coming together in a similar way that the original Whitey Ford Sings the Blues record did. That's why I kind of also named it what it is. Um, there was a lot of similarities, and I feel like I just pulled everything from uh, every, every part of the toolbox that I've learned from since I started. You know, whether it was the Ice-T years or the House of Pain years or the Whitey Ford years, I just drew on it all and tried to see, like I said, it was the eight years of life. It's not like a, 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 a literal representation of what's happened to me, but it's an emotional journey of like all the kind of feelings and shit that I've like a lot of struggles and a lot of it's 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 my best record you know but eight years right here so I've never been in a rush that's a big statement that it's your best record it's my best record ever wow. I, I, I'm I'm confident in it it's, is it available everywhere like iTunes oh yeah, streaming, Spotify, Amazon, all that shit. yeah all stream that the shit out of it I own my masters you know what I mean <laughs> how does that work if, if you, you own it, your it, masters it, I mean, do you get more it's, when they stream it, well if you own your masters you get paid outright like you know you're the label I'm my own label so uh, the reason the people that complain about not getting paid by streaming are people that are signed to record deals that are getting a small piece of what the master is getting like, uh, the, if you own the master you know you, so streaming you know. is viable for someone who owns the master yeah 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 i mean it's viable period i mean kids you know, i mean that's the way it is it's just the it's the future i mean it's now but the the people who say it doesn't pay they're in shitty deals mm. you know what i mean cuz it it pays you know i would like it to pay a little better but you know it pays it pays all right who was it i think Crosby? if you take a million streams it equals out to around $8000 and that oh, sounds like for you. not yeah, it just in general like that's the payment for for what that is to a, to a label like it would be around to eight, a label yeah yeah like a million streams is is about the equivalent of about eight grand and uh, that doesn't sound like a lot but a million streams is like you know a thousand guys that or people fans of yours that stream your shit whatever a thousand times you know, a hundred times or right. whatever you know it's not it goes quicker than you think like I think Drake like streamed a billion streams his first week. Right. So, you know, that's a nice chunk of change, man. David Crosby was tweeting about how bad streaming deals are. But that is because he has a bad deal. With if he label. doesn't own his master, yeah. If he does, yeah. if he's like recording a deal for another record for the record company, you know what I mean? I then think it's all his older songs. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Then he's probably got shit deals on that. I mean, some of my older stuff I don't get paid on what I feel like I should, but it's like yeah. the stuff since I've owned my masters, which is the last fifteen years of my life, you know what I mean? It's fascinating for me on the outside looking at what happens with labels and how the, how they do things. It's it's just it's amazing their sort of survival instincts, how they figured out how to, well, how to stay Well, their labels are signing podcasters now because of streaming. Streaming like you should be getting checks from this, Joe. I don't I don't allow them to stream me. Uh, well, t honestly, you could be Pandora, I mean, Spotify, I say nope. Well, you'd probably have to be exclusive to one of them is the deal too. Um, well, either way, what they are is just it's not just streaming portal. though digital your youtube views are streaming that's yeah. that's streaming it okay. doesn't have to be with a streaming service right i mean yeah. but you you should have a digital company that is representing you that's collecting all that if you don't yeah no i yeah, do for okay. that okay yeah. just make sure yeah but that's um like the it's YouTube all streaming thing, it's you know what the youtube thing the most fascinating thing about it is that there's only youtube that's the the crazy thing. We think about how big the internet is, and there's really only one thing like YouTube. It's a it was a good moment they came and the branding and the, everything they did. I they mean, just I, own I saw it. like a, I don't know if it was a documentary because it wasn't full length, but it might have been just like a little like feature like it within a news kind of segment thing about uh -huh. how the, you know the original videos that were huge on on YouTube were like a kid biting another kid and like the original <sighs> first for the longest time the most played video yeah, on yeah. YouTube was the Charlie biting the kid yeah. or something. You know, Charlie was, bit me. And that's me. where it all came from. Yeah. Like it almost came from America's home video, like funniest yeah. home video kind of thing youtube kind of filled in that void for a long time with it, they were memes before they were memes they were just viral videos you yeah. know what I mean? um that wasn't so, that long ago that's it wasn't. What's so crazy it's like a decade ago and that well i mean the, the necessity of having to change the music business is what changed youtube you know because they caught on like all right tv doesn't play videos anymore right and nobody's buying records so we got to sell 
you know, the whole the whole thing for the longest was like when the bottom had really fallen out for a while of making any mon money off of actual records was like, well, you can bootleg my record and you can download my record, but you can't download the T-shirt. You right. know what I mean, that, so it became oh. sell the lifestyle. So the music became background music to the you know everything else. It was part of the lifestyle and the cars and this and all. I wanted you to do was really go buy this limited edition T-shirt that I'm selling mm. you right now. You know right, what I mean? Right. That's what that's the game changed into, and it's still that. You know what I mean? That's why the fuckery and the trollism and all that because people want eyes on them. So the next thing they have the opportunity to sell, they can sell. Yeah, that's what's interesting to me about labels is now labels get a piece of everything. They do these three sixty deals. Yeah, don't. That's Satan. <sighs> Crazy. That's Satan. That you. What, that was unheard of when I was there. You didn't get a piece. Of, not only t-shirts, shirts. You get a piece of. They get a piece of the live money. Yeah. They get every. You know. And yeah. It's like how could you know, they? It used to be like I had to pay you. I used, it used to be like, all right, a record label would give me half a million dollars, all right, and I'd go and make a record with that. I'd, I'd, I'd I could spend whatever I wanted making the record, and whatever the rest of the money left over was mine. That five hundred grand was mine. I could spend it all making the record, or I could spend fifty grand making the record and pocket the rest. That was up to me. Um, and then after that, my job, your job as a label, was to sell that record. My job was to hit the road and go tour. Right, and I go tour for a few years, and at first I'm not even making money touring. You're giving me money to go out there and tour. It's called tour support. That used to be, and that gets added onto your bill. You didn't so, get paid. No, you would get like money for tour, but like it wouldn't cover like a bus and a band and all this. So the right the label would supplement that with what they called tour support, oh. which would also become part of the debt you owed the label. Right, but. As you built your live audience, your guarantees would go up. Sooner or later, you could stop taking that money, and then your record sales would pay that off, hopefully, if you were doing well enough. And now you got your own stream of revenue with live T-shirts, all this other outside shit that it's yours. That's not, that's not the way anymore. it was when I came up. Yeah. Now it's like, that's not a deal. They, they, they want it all. Out? How'd they sneak that in? Well, it, because when Napster and shit dropped the bottom out of the record business and nobody was paying for records, labels weren't going to give you a half a million dollars just for your record because nobody was buying records. They want to sell your T-shirts, too. Isn't that amazing, though, that they figured out how to stay alive like that? Just so, Because they always knew that people were going to be needy. It always it, it all boils down to this, too. And I, I hope somebody one day like really investigates this and makes some sort of like documentary about it. It's like they had so many opportunities to be ahead. The movie industry didn't take the same hit. They took hits and they deal, dealt with piracy. But they the music industry had a moment, if you remember, there was like some kids that got in trouble for downloading ridiculous amounts of music and their yeah. parents were being held responsible. Yeah. And the music industry backed off of it because the news wasn't good. The movie industry never backed off of that kind of shit. They told you, we're going to fucking sue your life off. You well, just... some people did get sued for, yeah, for but, music, though. But the music industry backed off, though. They didn't keep the pedal did? down and keep the foot on the neck like, you're going to steal this. This costs... You got to remember, back then, if I would have got a half a million dollars, I probably would have spent up to two of that on a record. $200,000 just on the making, studio time, whoever's got to be involved, engineers, producers, 200 grand off top. Just, that's minimum we would have spent on a record. And then it gets, you go out and people steal it. Right. You know what I mean? It's the same. You know, it, 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 Did you it, ever it. download shit for free? Um, my thing, not at first. My thing became later like, okay, this is, what, this is the wave, whatever. But if I, my, my philosophy was if I downloaded your shit, and I liked it, I would go, I'd go buy it. Me too. Like I, yeah. if, I, if I downloaded it and it was trashed, then hey, I looked at it as like a taste <laughs> test. That's okay. good, yeah. Okay, maybe if more people adapted that, things would have. But again, the record industry had plenty of opportunities to jump ahead of it and be, a, they didn't, there was technology out there already that people were dealing with, bringing it to them, telling them so, this wave is coming. So what and the record industry was making so much money at that time. If you look at the amount of money they were making off of the boy bands and the Britney Spears and all. The money, it was retarded how much money was in the record business. And they let it all go down the drain because they mm. they thought they had all the answers and they thought it had all the money. You know? What could they have done to stop it? I'd have to go back. I have some like books on it. Like, Something like, there like was technological for streaming. People, there were people ready there to help set up things like, like Napster and how to monetize it and control mm -hmm. it. Like, there was ways to deal with it. There were ways to be part of it instead of like wait till it was too late. Well, the thing about the movie industry too though is that like people want to go to the movies. Like the experience is not as good. Apple Music saved the music industry. Like Apple at first, iTunes, why didn't the record industry like there were people telling them this is coming and I didn't mean to interrupt you but I, it, don't 
they could have made iTunes first. Not called iTunes, but like the Something record industry like it. itself should have digitized and been ready. Right. It would have been that simple. Come up with their own version of iTunes. Right. And, inv- and they could have invested a lot more money. The music industry is booming, but artists are losing big. Because most 12%. artists are signed to record deals. With just 12% of revenue. 12%. <sighs> Whoa, $43 billion a year was its most profitable year since 2006. Yep. Listeners are spending more money than ever, largely on streaming and live music with consumers spending Tor. totaling more than $20 billion last year. Wow, yet artists aren't feeling the increase. Of that $20 billion music industry, entities such as record labels took home $10 billion. Musicians taking home just $5.1 billion with the majority of the revenue coming from touring and concert sales. It's amazing. That's amazing that the it's like a parasitic industry. It's like you they don't people don't necessarily need them the way they used to need not, them. Not not like they used to. I was going to just play devil's advocate and say well it used to be that I'm the guy to put up all the fuck if I'm the label. Right. Yo, I'm putting up millions of dollars in right. advance gambling it on you. Right. Now when you win you want to take away my lion's share? No, fuck you. Now it's totally different. Yeah. Now you can do this on your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could go start an Instagram, start a YouTube, start this, and you can make beats on your laptop in well, your like living Well, like Chance the Rapper, room. right? Isn't that the guy who does everything? Everything he's done is his own shit sure. online? Sure. Sure? Sure, yeah. Oh, you don't believe it? What do you Not mean? Not exactly. Oh, Jamie's got a conspiracy theory? Not a conspiracy, but he's got more support than he would say. Now he does? Sure, yeah. Yeah, now he does, maybe. <laughs> But, I mean, he basically has become huge all on his own, right? Mm, yeah. And, you know, I mean, you look, it's like so many viral music hits. You know, they get they get big online just because kids share it and they like it, yeah. and then it becomes gigantic. Like, with the music industry, the, the industry, the, the, the labels have nothing to do with that, right? No, they do, um, there's labels that are doing their thing out there that they actually know what they're doing and marketing-wise and all that. There's still a lot of kids that are being made, you know, famous by label so there's some benefit yeah i mean there's a lot of these a lot of the reason some of these artists are only seeing 5.1 minutes because they're signed to record deals you know jay-z ain't only saying five you know five percent right. of what you know he's due because he you know he's been in the game long enough he know and they started out with their own label they started in the beginning rockefeller records was right. independent so that's the kind of you know those kind of guys are never going to lose as long as you know they can still make music that people buy. Yeah, they figure out a way to rope you in early too. Where like even if your record is successful, the second record, you, it's not like you're going to be able to be independent on the second record. They, they owe you. They own you for several down the line, right? Usually, I mean, it used to be. I think the standard was like eight. Eight. Yeah, eight yeah. albums. But it's it's that. But that's it, that's it's 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 misleading because it depends on where you're from too. There's also like you know if your first record is very successful and you have a lawyer that has any wherewithal, you're renegotiating before you do the second record. You know what I mean? These right. are things you learn. But like if, if you're struggling, that re- that eight record thing too. Also, if you study the record business, it goes back to like when actually artists used to be built that like over. It, nobody expected the first album to do anything. Like when right. they would sign bands, like in the '60s, like you know, they had a plan. Like by album three and four, here's where we'll be. You know, they right, used to right, build right. artists. They used to be A and R. They actually used to nurture and fucking take care of a band for a long time and watch them grow. You know, I mean, that's the way it used to be until like you know whatever it was. I, I maybe the '80s it changed. I had a record deal for my comedy album in 1999. I had a record deal with Warner Brothers. It was like a real record deal. Like uh, I met with them. They they promoted it. The, the, the whole deal. It was like I, I went through the whole record industry business. Yeah, there was always a comedian or two on labels. Yeah, like, they don't have that anymore. I mean, because you, comedy albums. You do it yourself. Well, it's not just that. You definitely can do it yourself. But comedy albums just aren't that popular anymore for some strange reason. Well, because it, it's a, it's. it's it's a piss poor way it's to also, view the art form. You want to watch it. Exactly. I was about to say it's so it's so visual that now comedy albums were big when everybody didn't have a TV screen or everything. Right. It's like you could listen and imagine what we what he was doing or something. But some like, yeah. guy 